Uh, tell us about your character and Freaky. Sure. So I played Josh. Um, he's really gay in the best way possible. Um, he's uh, one of the three kind of trio of best friends and Millie and I with Josh. And he, uh, I don't know, I, I love him for exactly that. He's kind of unapologetic. He's um, incredibly outspoken and he plays a kind of central role in fighting against the butcher in the storyline. Yeah. There's a funny moment where your character kind of points out that minor minority characters usually die in horror films that kind of get like pushed aside. I think it was, so I, I guess, how did it feel getting to play Josh and kind of subverting those typical roles that you see gay characters in? Sure. I mean, it, it felt great, especially because it was so intentional. And I mean, that's kind of the magic of both Chris Landon and Michael Kennedy, our co-writers, that they um, they knew exactly what they were getting into and they knew what they were doing. Not only were they writing a queer character that they kind of um, were endowing with all of this extra power. Josh isn't just a trope, but also Josh and Nyla are clearly playing at the trope of the gay best friend and the black best friend in a horror film. And in like the first 20 minutes, I say, oh God, what is it? Um, uh, you're black, I'm gay, we're so dead. And yeah. that that literally is a commentary on what normally happens in horror films to minority characters. And it's, it was really fun to know throughout that we were making a statement on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like like horror is kind of in the last few years going through like a renaissance in terms of like black re representation um, when you think about like Get Out or Us yeah. or, or um, uh, Lovecraft Country um, so I guess I kind of I'm kind of wondering like maybe do you think we'll see anything like that in terms of like LGBTQ characters or movies or horror movies because I mean the genre is very queer but it's not explicit do you get what I'm, if that makes sense? Yes, I do. Um, You know, what's funny is that uh, since moving to LA, I've been kind of like, tossed into the world of like queer horror filmmakers. And there's really a world of them. I didn't understand that. Um, But, and it's been amazing to like hang out with them and go see them, you know, talk and even that like now drive in screenings or hosting events. And they're constantly talking about how horror as a genre is inherently a bit queer and has all kinds of queer avatars in it. And I agree with that. And I've spoken about that before but I think that queerness in general is it's of course it's not new but it's very much new in terms of being expressed in all of its nuance honestly very much like other representation as well mm -hmm. um we need 20 more get outs of different variants you know yes. um mm -hmm. but <laughs> but when it comes to queerness I think that um, horror has always had this knack for being able to talk about society without showing society as it actually is because it's heightened. It talks about mental health by making something like, um, you know, Ari Aster films, Hereditary. Um, it talks about, you know, queerness and race by some, sometimes something as whim whimsical as freaky. Um, and I think, I think I just, I'm interested to see more, not on the nose content, but I do think that there's room for horror to grow and quite frankly, other genres to grow where queerness in all of its nuance is represented more, I guess, holistically and not so much with like messaging behind it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I think like this movie points it out pretty directly, like you said, it's like, we have these horror movie tropes and these ideas and you know, you can kind of get like, ideas of characters and the that the movie shows you and you know who they're supposed to be and how the movie's going to go and I think for the first time we're kind of seeing the characters that aren't like white white and straight kind of get like actual like fleshed out human being storylines I know um, wild yeah and it's like what's 2021 is just not happening <laughs> um, but yeah I even so <laughs> so Millie has a love interest in the in the movie mm -hmm. um, even when she's in the butcher's body and Isaac, I think that that's his name, is like flirting with her. What's the tea on that? Do you know, like, it's very like Mulan in my head. You know how like Shang flirts with Mulan as a boy? And then he's like, oh, <laughs> Does he? Does he? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. That's, okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's an opinion. You can have it. <laughs> um, I hope you're right because that's awesome for Disney. I don't think you're right. I, I imagine, and maybe I'm projecting. But you know I what? You know what? Fine. In 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 this world that we created, <laughs> that you, yes, I'm with you. Um, so I that moment was talked about on set since day one, and you know it's funny because the two actors involved 
were very sort of kind of straight laced and I have done my homework and I will show up and I will do the scene. They were very like kind of down and practical. Everybody else was so excited. <laughs> um, but, you know, from the get, Chris and Michael, again, are amazing writers and Chris being the director of this, he he knew what he was doing and he he wanted the love story of the film to not be inhibited by the, you know, there happens to be a body swap. Um, so, so in, in a way, I'm actually, I'm really proud of Chris for that in particular and the way that he directed the scene because it's, it's incredibly grounded. And I just remember, you know, I wasn't even supposed to be on set that day, but like, obviously I snuck on the set. <laughs> um, and I'm, I watched a little bit of the playback and, oh my God, that's my breakfast story comes out of my mouth. And, um, and first of all, I also want to say proud of them. That was the first take and the only take that they used. Wow. Oh. Are you kidding? Like, screw me as an actor. Um, <laughs> but but they were both so ready and open. And I think, you know, both as straight, cis, white men, they were just kind of, they weirdly knew the position they were in. And they just said, I'm game. And that openness is what brought authenticity to the scene. And so it's just about identity. It's about romance. It has nothing to do with the, the two men happen, happening to do it are in fact men. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was really but, cool. I've never seen a moment like that before in a movie like that I just thought it was very well done and funny and like yeah it was well done um Yay. that was obviously a great moment on set do you have any other like favorite moments on set that were just you just are stick around in your memory uh I loved the day when we worked with my mom's character I it was so fun um and that that was also one of the biggest turnaround days in terms of style because we shot most of that house stuff in one day so mm -hmm. we did the intense fight scenes with you know the butcher and the group then they all left and my mom came in and it's all straight comedy for a second and it's completely different and then you have to like caffeinate and turn back on because then Catherine's gonna pick up the knife and start chasing you again you're like uh-huh mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes um it was it was a fun day yeah that the mom moment was so funny i was cackling <laughs> oh my the God. I, on I honestly only think two gay writers could really pull that off. Like, it's the anti-coming out scene. Instead of coming out, she's like, no, you're, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What are, do you have any favorite horror films? Oh, yeah. Um, besides, like, the serious, like, very, like, bougie Ari Aster, you know, Hereditary, and um, what's the mushroomy one? Um, Midsummer. Midsummer. I love Midsummer. Um, but my favorite is Jennifer's Body, hands down. Ooh, a classic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always watch. I remember when it came out, and I didn't watch it because I was like, "What is this? Like, what is the genre?" And then sure. I watched it a few years ago, and I was obsessed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It came out. It was ahead. Not only was it ahead of its time, but it was like it. The I mean, the marketing was all wrong, and you know, Diablo Cody will say that now. Like they they saw two really hot, really talented actresses, and they said, "We're just going to pit them against each other in a sex ad." Um, but but it was I mean, it was ahead of its time, and I really do think that the oh no, shut up, phone, sorry. Um, with I really do think that the film um says so much about women and like both women empowerment and women oppression in general, and I think it's also really funny and scary film, so I love it. Yeah. What kind of stories do you want to see next? Whether it's something that you want to play in or just like in general, what kind of stories do you want to see coming after this? I obviously want to see more queer stories. I want to see it all over the genre map. I personally want to both write, create, and act all over the genre map when it comes to queerness. And specifically, I mean, my jam is mental health. I, I, I mean it when I say that films like Hereditary get me because it's such an artistic lens to put mental health through. And I want to do that with my career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you have any, I mean, it's kind of, we're still in the pandemic, <laughs> especially in LA. I know it's kind of crazy right now. Yep. Um, are there, do you have any 2021 plans or like maybe not plans, but hopes and aspirations? Sure. I have <laughs> take, I've <laughs> hopes, you mean that the apocalypse will end? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, I've taken the opportunity when we all had a bit of downtime, especially at the top of this to uh, start writing. And I didn't really know where it would go, but I'm very happy to say that the train is kind of moving and moving fast when it comes to Misha the writer and not just Misha the uh, actor and potentially the two will intersect. And that is about all I'm gonna say, but I'm really pumped and it's 
it's looking a lot better than I thought just sitting down, you know, in the middle of the pandemic and writing whatever get me. That's really exciting. Of course. Uh, have a great day then. Bye. You too.